everybody, welcome to our Christmas extravaganza at Mohawk. I'm Whitney Sargent. And I'm Jake Clare. You're in for a fun-filled show that's sure to make you laugh, cry, and feel plenty of Christmas cheer. You've got Devin and Aaron baking sugar cookies and an exclusive interview with the Grinch. And later on, we've got Christine's top five Christmas movie flicks, some Christmas decorating tips, and a great musical grand finale. <laughs> First, let's check in with our field reporters who are on assignment to look for Santa's workshop in the North Pole. How's it going, guys? Unfortunately, we couldn't find Santa's workshop, but we got to see Marshmallow Valley, Candy Cane Forest, Gingerbread Canyon, and even the Hot Chocolate River. We tried our best to find Santa's workshop, but it seems old St. Nick has hidden it pretty well. Anyway, it's getting cold up here, so we're going to head back to the airport. Um, Spencer, are you sure it's that way? I think we came from that way. Uh, well, let's just check the map. Are you going to check the map? I thought you had the map. No, I gave it to you at Candy Cane Forest. Please tell me you packed the map when you were looking for all those candy canes. Um... <laughs> Oops. What do you mean, oops? How are we going to get back to the studio? We can find our way back, Spencer. At least we have our passports. Spencer, you were supposed to have the passports. Ah, uh, I, I think I lost them. Well, it looks like our hosts are having a bit of trouble up there in the North Pole. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what I would do if I forget my passport. I don't think I'd be too worried about my passport if there's a whole forest of candy canes to eat. Or marshmallows. Mm. Or s'mores. Oh, think you can just mix those three places together? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Well, one of my favorites actually treats is the holidays are cookies. Mm. Me too, and I know a couple <laughs> of people that make the best sugar cookies. Coming up now, we have Baking Memories with Devin and Aaron. Hey everyone, welcome to Baking Memories. I'm Aaron. I'm Devin. And today we're making sugar, sugar cookies! cookies. Alright, so sugar cookies are the best thing of Christmas. Oh, I'm so excited. They are so good and the icing is so wonderful. Excuse me. So the first thing we ought to do is mix our dry ingredients. How about you mix those? Okay. We're going to use two and three quarters cups of flour, one cup of sugar. Okay. I'm pouring. Two teaspoons of baking powder. My goodness. Alright, now I'm going to have you use this and okay. stir it all around. Give it a good mix before we add our wet ingredients. Perfect. Next, okay. we got to add the butter and the egg. All right, here we go. It's okay, we like butter, we like butter. All right, now we're going to add our egg. Now we're going to mix it together until it's nice and creamy to add our dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Now that it's a pretty good mix, we're going to add our vanilla extract. Now I'm going to have you slowly add it to our butter and so we're pretty well mixed with the dough now, which means we're going to clear our table, get some flour, mm -hmm. and start rolling it out to cut. Cool. This can get a little bit messy, but that's okay. Messy is important when you're making cookies. We're going to throw a little bit of flour on the island so it doesn't stick. So what you want to do is take your ball, flatten it a little bit, and once it's flat enough, you want to start rolling. Okay. So I start rolling, mm -hmm. and flip it every once in a while so it doesn't stick to the table. All right, so when you're finished rolling, we're gonna need our trays. Okay. We wanna put parchment on paper on it so it'll cook nicely Ooh. and won't stick to the pan. Okay, so I seem to have misplaced my cookie cutters. Let's see if the magic hands <laughs> know where they are. Perfect, wow. there they are. See, magic hands are wonderful, everybody. This is amazing. There's our snowman, perfect. Nice. Oh, my candy cane. Wonderful, your star. Oh, and our Christmas tree. This is Thanks, amazing. Thanks, magic hands. Let's try it. The first cook, sorry, mm -hmm. cut of our cookie. Oh, there we go. It's so smooth. That is so good. And I can't wait to try them. Yep, we got enough room for a star. All right. And carefully pick it up and place it on our pan. Pop it out. Hey, there that's pretty go. good. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. Let's pick a few more and we'll throw these in the oven. Okay. Okay, so we've got our cookies all cut up, our hands are sufficiently floured, and now it's time to bake. 
What do we bake them at? We're gonna put them in the oven at 400 degrees for about eight minutes. All right, magic hands, can you grab our cookies? Welcome back. Now that the cookies are out of the oven and we've let them cool for five minutes, it's time to decorate. Erin? I'm ready. We're ready. I'll give you the green for your tree. Ooh, realism. Now the icing should be nice and runny so it'll decorate easily. Okay. Once you outline, go all the way through the middle, fill it nice and full. Then use a tip or a spoon or a toothpick to get that icing all around the center. So this is the block I made earlier, so you only need a little bit. Ooh, that's a nice block. I used a paintbrush mm -hmm. to make my job a little bit easier. For his hat, what do you think? Yeah, I like that. What do you say we like take a step sideways and then we'll sh do like a reveal at the end when we're done? Good idea. Yes. All right. All right. Ready? Are you ready? Yep. On the count of three. One, two, three. Mine is a snowman with buttons and a smiley face and a nose. How about yours? Mine is a Christmas tree decorated as an homage to the Christmas tree farm where the tree came from in the first place. Well everyone, hope you enjoyed our cookie making. Whether you choose to share or not, enjoy your cookies and have a merry, merry Christmas. And have a great holiday, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year, birthday, literally anything this holiday. But don't freeze to death. Do not freeze to death. Bye. Bye. Mmm, those cookies look delicious. I hope they save some for me. Mm, are you sure you need more sweets, honey? Mm. Well, certainly not if you are what you eat, because I'd like to say I'm pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, play nice, you two. I haven't heard anyone bicker like this before, except maybe Spencer and Cynthia. Let's see how our field reporters are doing. Okay, now do you remember where you put the map? It was one of, yeah, one of those trees where I was picking candy canes. But there's so many trees around here. How are we supposed to find the right one? <sighs> I don't know. But good luck, I'm going to pick some more candy canes. I just wish I was back home. Ha <laughs> Well, it doesn't look like it's going well for our reporters. Hopefully they'll make it back for the end of the show. Mm. Yeah, they're really having a hard time up there. Mm. I think I need a bit of cheering up after that. What do you think? No, I agree. Well, maybe Christine can actually tell us what's hip on this holiday season. Don't worry guys, I've got just what you need. As far as I'm concerned, a good movie can fix anything. So I've rounded up my top five Christmas flicks to get you guys into the holiday spirit. Let's take a look. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came with our packages, boxes, or bags. Kicking us off at number five is the 1966 original How the Grinch Stole Christmas. A story beloved by all, the Grinch plots to steal from Christmas from the Who's down in Whoville by taking their presents, only to discover that Christmas may mean a whole lot more. Oh, Christmas isn't just a day. It's a frame of mind. And that's what's been changing. That's why I'm glad I'm here. Maybe I can do something about it. Coming in at number four, Miracle on 34th Street. The movie got a remake, but nothing comes close to the original. The story follows Kris Kringle after he gets a job as a department store Santa. He has everyone believing he's the real deal, but he won't give up until he gets a particularly stubborn mother-daughter duo to believe in him and get into the Christmas spirit themselves. That's right, Will Ferrell slides into my number three spot in Elf. In this instant classic, Buddy realizes that he doesn't quite fit in at the North Pole, so he makes his way to the Big Apple to find his father and figure out where he belongs. The movie is full of laughs, something, and a generous heaping of chaos. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. It's a Wonderful Life takes the very close runner-up spot. 
The classic film follows the town's humble hero, George Bailey, as he plans to throw his life away on Christmas Eve following a financial mishap. Luckily for him, he meets Clarence, his guardian angel, who shows George just how valuable his life really is. Oh, is this your snowbank? No. Who are you? Well, actually, I am a dentist. Well, you can't do Christmas without claymation, so it's no surprise that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer clinches my number one spot. Although outdated, there's something about the quirky characters and hearing Yukon Cornelius sing about silver and gold that always seems to get me into the festive mood. Now, I know that I missed a few big ones, but these are my personal favorites, so it may not be the same as your list. Couple honorable mentions go to Charlie Brown Christmas and to Die Hard, which, yes, it is a Christmas movie. Let's head on over here and see what the other hosts have to say. Guys, what Christmas movie gets you in the spirit? I would have to say probably Home Alone. Any Home Alone movie, we probably watch that every single Christmas. Yeah, uh, besides the original Rudolph, which is clearly would be my number one, too. Uh, I, I watch a lot of Bad Santa. I'm See, a big fan of Billy Bob Thornton. Never seen Bad Santa. It's worth a giggle. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Maria? Oh, I love The Grinch. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> <laughs> Hands <Yeah>. down. <laughs> well, Mohawk, you heard it from us. These are the flicks to check out if you need a holiday boost. We'll be coming back after the commercial break with a special segment with the green guy himself. And then I got a sneak peek at Santa's Naughty or Nice list. And you won't believe who made the Naughty list this year. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. <laughs> Welcome back guys, we had a great show for you today, even though we've already started it, coming back from commercial break, joining me is the Grinch, um, doesn't look very Grinch-like, but that's okay, uh, we're going to read the story of you, even though we're halfway through it, we're going to pick it back up where Max is climbing the mountain, and he's just taken all the presents, terrible guy, but that's okay. I mean, I do that. It's kind of his thing. Alright, cool, we're going to start. Uh, so it was a quarter past dawn, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, and the trappings. Don't forget the trappings. So like sometimes, the first time I did this, I forgot the trappings. Okay. Just remember to, when you're doing this to take the trappings. 3,000 feet up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's was the Grinch, Grinchishly humming. I'm not proud of doing that, but it did happen. <laughs> They're finding out now, no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up, I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two when the who's down in Whoville will all cry boo-hoo. Did you really think they were gonna cry boo-hoo? Like, just like that? I was really hoping. Can you make the noise for us? How does it go? No, I'm not gonna do right that. Right into camera three there. <laughs> what, it's the boo-hoo? Can you do that boo There we go, there perfect. We go. That's All right. Wanted. That's what I wanted. Um, that's a noise, grinned the Grinch. I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. How did you do it? I, I just did this. That, brilliant. Okay. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started low, then it started to grow. What was going on in your mind when it started to grow off there, Mr. Grinch? Um, I was like, hey, look at that over there. It's growing. I don't think you can look <laughs> at a sound, but all right, that's fantastic. Uh, we're going to keep going here. 
but the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry, but it couldn't be so. But it was merry very. All right. Uh, he stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Can you yeah. see your reaction face? <laughs> yeah, I could right do that. Camera two there. Or three, sorry. Whoa. So that was a shock, <laughs> folks. You can clearly see that was just spectacular. It does not get better than that. Uh, so the Grinch, realizing that all the Who's, every Who down in Whoville, tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. It's just what happens down in Whoville, folks. Yeah, I didn't expect um, that at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other. It just, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzled and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without, risen, ri bleh, came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. Man, he should be a rapper. Yeah. Um, and he puzzled for three hours. All right, three hours seems a little extensive. Well, everything I say has to rhyme, so it took me a while to think of what to say. Makes sense. Uh, Till his puzzler was sore. How sore was it? Like, pretty bad? I had to put ice on my puzzler for a while. All right, cool. Um, then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. You didn't know that? It took you three hours to think of that. My parents didn't give me anything and also hit me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you really should not be laughing at that, but that is fantastic. Um, all right, maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. Um, and, and what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. That did happen. It actually happens every once in a while. Oh, oh, sh oh, God. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> One more. Oh. Folks. You can't, you can't write this stuff. This is just quality television right here. It's qual qual quality television. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. Grinch passing away on our show. Fantastic. I'm going to finish the book now. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he wheezed his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. Well, folks, he didn't do just that. He passed away, but that's okay. That's all we can do. And that was Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. Thank you for joining us on Josh Whitaker's Storytime, or Storytime with Josh Whitaker, whichever one works for you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you guys have a good night. Now, before we continue, that segment was pre-taped a few days ago, and I'm happy to report the Grinch did not pass away on the show and has been recovering well in hospital. Unfortunately, not all of our news is so positive. This past weekend, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger was caught red-handed and charged with an FUI, flying under the influence. The youngest member of Santa's sleigh team was pulled over after the annual reindeer drinking games on Saturday night. This is Rudolph's second FUI in the last year, which isn't surprising considering his party lifestyle. Many attribute this phase in his life to a rough childhood, but at this point there is no excuse. The young buck did make bail and is back home at the workshop, and Santa hasn't made any comment as to whether Rudolph will lead the sleigh team or not this Christmas Eve. As 2016 comes to a close, many of you are looking forward into the new year with fitness resolutions. And as always, between the Instagram fitness models and reality show celebrities releasing their programs, fitness and diet plans are a dime a dozen. This year, however, someone new is coming into the mix. After having roaring success as a children's author, Buddy the Elf is releasing his own plan just in time for 2017. If you have a sweet tooth, this plan was made for you. The eating guidelines feature a diet of almost exclusively sugar, ensuring a balance of all four groups, uh, candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup. Don't worry, if you need a heavier meal to tide you over, Buddy included his famous recipe for spaghetti. Now, I'm not sure how successful his venture will be, but we wish him the best. 
Frosty the Snowman has also been making headlines this week as he petitions for equal snowman rights. This political prote protest is the latest installment of the Frosty Olaf feud that's taken pl place after the past few years. According to Frosty, Olaf's personal year-round flurry is a right that he and every other snowman should be entitled to. In a recent interview, Frosty explained that he was the first lovable snowman. He played with the children and brought joy to the whole town. What makes Olaf so special? Now, Olaf's personal flurry allows him to enjoy life to the fullest year-round, whereas Frosty has his fun each winter only to melt and wait to be rebuilt the following year. There's no word from Queen Elsa or anyone at the North Pole at this time, but we'll keep you posted on how it plays out. Regardless of whether the petition is successful, don't expect Frosty and Olaf to be friendly anytime soon. After feuding for years, there really is no love lost between the two. Finally, we got a sneak peek at Santa's Naughty or Nice list, and America's sweetheart, Betty White, has made it onto the naughty list. This co news comes as a shock for many, but the 94-year-old actress isn't as squeaky clean as she appears. I asked Santa how she fell from the nice list, and he said it was too much wine and her foul potty mouth. Betty tells a bit of a different story, though, explaining that her annual Christmas card for the clauses was lost in the mail, putting a wedge between them. It sounds like the whole thing was just a misunderstanding, and the two are known to be old friends, so I'm sure the big guy will have a change of heart soon enough. That's all I've got for you guys today. Let's check in on Cynthia and Spencer to see how they're doing in the North Pole. Do you think you left the passports here in the valley? You emptied your pockets while we took a nap on those marshmallows over there, right? <laughs> I don't know. We double-checked before we left. <sighs> Spencer, you really messed this one up. I'm going to go take a nap while you look. I need my beauty sleep before the grand finale. Bah. Not this time, Cynthia. You're going to help me look. Ugh, fine. <sighs> now we're going to take a look at the, de the decorator. <laughs> you meet other people who label themselves as professional Christmas tree decorators as well. And um, you can always tell. You can always tell the ones that, that mean it. Um, they're not just in it for the money. They're not just in it for the, the fame. Um, I really hope people see the passion within me when I tell them I'm a Christmas tree decorator. I'm, I'm not just phoning it in. This is, this is me. This is what I care about. I try to do cold calls a lot, but you know, it seems like everybody's like, oh, we've already set up our tree. And I say, oh, really? It's October. You already have your tree set up? I'm so sure. Or I hear, that doesn't make me comfortable. And I think, does it make you more comfortable to have a terrible Christmas tree set up? Really? Is that how you feel? Sure. So, it doesn't usually work out like that. Um, but. I get myself going by just doing, you know, friends and family. So, my favorite decoration, that's a tough one. Um, I inherited from my grandmother. She gave me this tiny Santa Claus. It's, you know, just made out of pipe cleaner and other little knickknacks. And um, he's just so cute and special and I feel like when I look into that little Santa Claus man's eyes, I can feel her telling me I've done right. And it means a lot to me. There are so many different decorations that go into a Christmas tree. Um, the baubles, the tinsel, the ribbons, the knickknacks, and of course, you know, the most important part is the star. Not an angel, let's be clear about that. Uh, but anyway, whenever I see a beautiful, bright star sitting atop a Christmas tree, I just feel like it instills a feeling of jolly old Saint Nick just looking down on you and 
filling you with Christmas joy. And it's, it's really something. It's, it's a feeling of wonder. If there's any impact I can leave on the world, it's that I hope that when you decorate your tree, you really give it your all. You know that vacation time you always just put off at the end of the year and you end up wasting it? How about put it to a good use this year? So take a week off and, you know, just fully devote yourself to a Christmas tree. Um, and make sure your tree represents you. And now joining us in studio is the decorator himself, Evan Arbor. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm personally very excited to have you here today just because I always have so much trouble decorating my own Christmas tree. I never know where to put things. It's just a huge mess. And you decorated the Christmas tree here for us today. I did, I did. What was the most challenging thing about decorating this tree? Well, I'm gonna be, ob I'm gonna be honest here. I really don't appreciate a fake tree. Just letting you know that. Um, so it was a little hard for me to do, hard for me to bring myself to do. Right. But you know, you gotta work with what you've got. So anyway, um, also no star, what, okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I really appreciated the acorns. Okay. Yeah. And where do you get your inspiration for decorating from? Where does that come from? Um, my grandmother, uh, you know, uh, going over to her house at Christmas was, I mean, that's what I looked forward to every single year, ever, like every single year of my life, all year round, 365 days a, a, a year. I, uh, I, I just always thought of my grandmother and, and, and celebrating with her because she's so special. And you just said that you don't like the fake trees, right? How do you feel about people who do get fake trees for Christmas and don't go out and spend the time to pick a real tree? It, it angers me. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty calm, normal guy, you know, uh, but there's something about just copping out like that that re it, it really gets to me. And, and I think if you really respect uh, jolly old Saint Nick and you respect yourself, you will make sure you, 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 do the, you do the right thing and you get a real tree from a real forest. And the star on top of the tree, you have some sort of intense love, I wanna say, for the star on top of the tree. Where does that come from? Um, it's just, you know, tr stars are just so, uh, they perfect shape. Um, they, they just, in they have that feeling of Christmas. I, you know when you're, you're walking late at night at Christmas and you look, you look up into the sky and you see the beautiful stars, oh, there's no yes. light pollution or anything like that. Um, it's just a wonderful feeling and I, I think having that atop a Christmas tree um, as opposed to an angel because don't even get me started on angels but um, it, it really rings home the feeling of Christmas. And how many trees did you decorate over this holiday season so far? Um, Twelve. Twelve? Yes. Wow. And how much does a decorator make? Do you want to share that with us or is that kind of top secret? Well, I mean, I do it I, I, I do it because I want, I don't do it for the money. Um, I mean, like, you know, I'm usually making like, okay, I don't make money on it, but I usually do get a lot of, you know, uh, Christmas cookies and. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, continue, continue. Okay, I just feel like you're not really taking me seriously, but um, I, I usually get paid in a lot of, you know, Christmas dinners and I really okay. appreciate it. My, 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 my uh, uncle, Lester, he throws a great, Christmas dinner and I always appreciate when he feeds me full up every Christmas. Well I'm gonna have to get you to come over and decorate my tree for me. No problem. Do you have a real tree? I do. Oh okay. No then fake we're good. trees then in my house. Good. No fake trees. Then we're good. Well thanks so much for coming in. I think it's about time we check in again with Cynthia and Spencer. We're coming to a close for the end of the show. <sighs> Finally we found the airport. Uh, but what were we going to do? We still have to get back to the studio. I can't miss my performance. Well, where haven't we looked? Hmm. Hmm. Wait. Hmm. Cynthia, hmm. what is this? What is this? Hmm. Looks like a passport. What? It's our passport! <laughs> Cynthia, are you kidding me? The map and the passports were in your hood this whole time? How did you not notice? Doesn't look like I have time to be looking in my hood. I'm a very busy and important okay, this person. This thing is ridiculous. Let's just go home. Okay. <sighs> oh my God.
Look who we have here. Oh, my God. I'm so oh. glad to be here. Oh, you're cold. Sit me closer to her. No, don't get that close to me. Well, we're glad you guys made it back safely to the oh, studio. Nice. That's better. Oh, all right. You guys well, took a little while. Yeah. I was Santa. Is that you both? Is it good? I think you both are. You both are back here safely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about time we wrap up this extravaganza. Would you guys like some And candy? what better way to wrap up a Christmas special than with a bit of Christmas music? Maria, Cynthia, do you care to play us out? Of course, Jake. Ah, you guys Let's go. Oh. <laughs> oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long came the warmth in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices for yonder grace. A new and glorious morn, oh, oh on your knees, oh, he Oh, it's a... <laughs>